start by asking you about team news. You obviously had this winter bug that meant a couple of players missed the match against Leeds. What's the latest there? Yeah, there have been um, a few of them that haven't been able to train. Um, we picked some um, knocks uh, during the game against Leeds as well. But um, hopefully today, when everybody's back, um, we would have better news. Are you able to tell us any names on that, on the new knocks? Uh, not yet. And how about Kieran and uh, Kieran Tierney and um, his ankle problem? What What's the latest with that one as well? Well, he's uh, progressing training. Uh, let's see again how he is today. Uh, he felt that it'd be better the last few days, um, but he wasn't 100 percent the day to start the game. So, uh, again, we will see what happens in the last uh, 48 hours. In his place, Nuno Tavares really impressed at the, against Aston Villa. What have you made of his debut, and what has been the conversation with him like since? Yeah, he had an impressive uh, performance to have uh, the first Premier League debut and um, and played it well he did um, with that intensity as well that he's not used to. Um, credit to the boy. Um, I really like what he did. Uh, he's still really young. It's improving. He sets so really well and um, and he had a really good performance. Against Leicester tomorrow, you are two teams that seem to be on the up. Do you see many similarities between yourself and Leicester? I don't know, both teams that uh, for sure they're going to play to win the game. Um, we both know that it's going to be a tough game. Um, we have some experiences against them as well. And um, and just prepare the game the best possible way. And the last two times you've been to the King Power, you've come away with victories, 3-1 last season. Um, what do you think it has been that's worked so well there in the, in the last couple of trips? I don't know. The team has changed. Uh, they can play in different formations. Um, they have some principles that um, that they respect really well. I think Brendan and the staff they've done a tremendous job over there. And uh, we're going to face uh, again that can have different faces um, because of the way they play. And, um, and it will be difficult. Arsenal had a more straightforward route to the EFL Cup quarterfinals than Leicester. Do you think that will play a part? We both have to play 90 minutes, except of the of the penalties. We have a really tough game against um, the most intense Premier League um, team that is Leeds, and um, and now we feel recovered and ready for for the next one. Many people thought the best 45 minutes of Arsenal season came against Aston Villa. Did you feel that, and and how do you feel that the team are moving in this 4-4-2 direction? I was really pleased with the performance, uh, with the energy that we had, um, with every intention from the first minute uh, to do what we believed that could hurt Villa, and we continue like that uh, throughout the game. So it's another step, that game is gone, um, and now the full focus is just on, on Leicester. Thank you. Jeremy Sky. Yeah, hi, Mikel. Um, just on Eddie Nketiah, he hasn't been in a Premier League match they squad so far this season, but he was really, really good against Leeds. Is he going to make the squad this weekend? And uh, can you say anything more about Eddie's future at the club? He is another one that is constantly pushing, uh, and every time he's got a chance, um, he takes that chance. Obviously, there are other players involved in those positions. Um, the same with other players that haven't had uh, a lot of minutes because we have not had any games in Europe, unfortunately, this season. And we have to manage that situation and reward the players that uh, they deserve. Sure. And Bert Leno again showed his quality, but how happy is he right now being the number two keeper? And can that continue with Bert for the rest of the season, you think? Well, I think he competed really well the other day and, uh, and he showed his level. And um, that's why he's fierce for uh, when he needs to play to do it at, at the best level and when he's not support the teammates like um, everybody else does. Um, Mikel Arsenal on the road this season where he scored one goal. Um, you played 4 4 2 against Villa successfully. Is that the way to really perhaps score more on the road, do you think? Maybe changing the formation when you travel? We have uh, different uh, options to play with different players that bring different qualities and, um, and formations that can adapt in relation to what we want to do in the game or because of the opponent and, um, and that's it. And then scoring goals or not um, is just uh, a consequence of the amount of chances they create but sometimes unfortunately it's just about efficiency as well. Sure, it's been quite a week in your old club Barcelona, kuman has been sacked, they're ninth in the Liga, there's talk about Xavi taking over. I mean, what a mess, what do you make of it all there? 
Again, that uh, yeah, it's been a lot going on the, in the last few years. Obviously, how COVID have affected um, the way that uh, obviously you have to overcome a situation like the departure of Messi, which has been um, the key player for many many years, and and all that takes time. And um, and we'll see. I just hope that everything works out um, well. You have again been linked with the job this week, and Mikel, anything you like to say about that? Is is the boss a job a job you covet one day? That I'm extremely happy at Arsenal, and I feel privileged to be here. And uh, my only focus is here. Can we just ask you finally to about five subs? Um, you were a big supporter of five subs back in 2020. Would you like to see five subs return in the Premier League when some people say it favours the big teams? I don't know. Um, there have been different situations with COVID world. Obviously, we had one situation. We had a lot of struggles and a lot of games in a really condensed calendar. I don't think that is going to change because the way it's looking uh, with the World Cup and 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 the willingness to play every two years and play then the African Cups and play another two cups and play every single competition that is possible. Uh, we have to think really about how we're going to take care of those players um, so we don't burn them. And that's a that's a good possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Ian talks for. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Hi, Michelle. How Hi. are you? Good, thank you. Uh, I'm unbeaten in eight games, six of those in the Premier League, two of in the League Cup, fourteen points in your last eighteen. What on earth have you done in the last month or so to turn things around so spectacularly? Go game by game. Try to improve every single game. Try to keep the spirits. And the perspective in the right place uh, when things are not working and um, and the same when the things are getting better because there's still a lot of things to improve. Um, we know that um, we don't want to be where we are still. We want to be the best and to do that there is a lot of things that um, have to get better. What, what in particular do you think your, your team still have to improve on? I think in every department we can get better. Um, the use of the ball, the understanding of the game, how we manage situations, um, how we deal with moments of pressure, um, in everything, every department I think we still have a lot of improvements to make, um, but there are some basics that we're doing much better, which helps a lot to win football matches. There were so many positives from the Aston Villa game, um, in terms of player performances, are you tempted just to let the same team go again? No, what I'm really pleased, what I'm really pleased is that um, that players are knocking on the door with the right attitude to play, and uh, and that's giving us uh, options and um, and just raises the level of the team. Uh, I don't see anybody saying or trying to find excuses when he's not playing or trying to blame somebody when he's not playing. Just trying to put the best possible work out there in training and then talk on the pitch, which is the best way. Talk outside the pitch is really easy because you can always find excuses and blame everybody else. It's when you have the opportunity, now is the moment to talk and show that um, that you can do it. And I really liked uh, in many examples what the players have done when they've been in those positions. Just two more for me. First of all, what does success now look like for Arsenal this season? Have you, have you changed it? I mean, for example, we're in the quarterfinals of a cup competition. Do you have to win a cup this year to be successful, or is it to get back into Europe? I mean, we're you know we're we're what, a third of the way through the season. I think to be successful, we have to play good first. <laughs> we have to be dominant, and and we have to have the identity that we have in every single game, and um, and compete and compete. And we are really difficult team to beat. And if that happens, we have a better chance. That would be the consequence. Would be the success. But um, I just focus on on the process and and what is in our hand to. To try together. And finally, you've come through the storm this season of being under pressure and people talking about you and your job. Uh, this week is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and, and Nuno Espirito Santo. Uh, as a fellow manager, do you, do you feel sorry when you, you see that, or do you think, well, thank goodness it's not me here this week? It's always about the results, Ian, and, and we all know that, uh, and the rest it doesn't really matter. So when you are having difficulties getting results, um, you're gonna be in that position. There's nothing new for anybody, but uh, but yes, uh, obviously you feel because you know what you have to be through. So um, you you feel that uh, obviously it's not a nice moment for 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 those that are are going through that. Cheers, Rico. Thank you. Thank you. George, BBC.